So we're going to go ahead and start our second presentation for the night. So I'd like to introduce Don. And I'll get this one right, Brian. WB6 LPJ. Okay. Sorry, Jim. I messed yours up. Don is going to give us a presentation on building your own lithium iron battery from scratch. Uh, I should say lithium iron phosphate battery from scratch. So I saw this at Hot RF Nights about a month ago. I did talk to you about it, that you were building it, and I thought it'd be an excellent presentation for tonight. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you have played with lithium batteries? Okay, that's a good, good representation of the group. So, Don, we're looking forward to this. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, we, we have a motorhome. Motorhome has six golf cart batteries in it, Trojan golf cart batteries, six volts. And uh, they have uh, got to the point where they're about 60% of capacity. So time to get rid of them. And I thought, hmm, the easiest solution, replace them to the tune of about $1,500 now at today's price point. I thought I can do better than that. So I did. I built two batteries, lithium ion phosphate, and I'll, I'll tell you all about them. And I did match that price point. So everybody's probably noticed that you can buy a lithium battery out there for what, 100, 100 amp hour battery, 400 bucks, right? All over eBay. You get what you pay for. <laughs> so. My goal was to do this once, and I, don't, I just don't want to do it again. So I was after top-of-the-line components. And I thought, you start looking around at the batteries that are available, you're looking at Battleborn, right? They have one heck of a history, a warranty, uh, very, very good, very excellent products. $900 for 100 amp hours? No, unacceptable. What I did is I've chose individual cells. These are from Eve, the manufacturer EVE. Each one of these cells is 280 amp hours. They're 3.6 volts. I run them in series. Makes a 12 volt at 280 amp hour battery. I went ahead and built two of them. So basically I'm looking at 5.6 uh, 560, sorry, uh, amp hours with the two battery packs that I'm going to put into my RV. Problem when you do that is you've got a lot of considerations to do because you do have lead acid technology in there currently. You can't run, you can't charge lithium ion from your alternator in your vehicle. That's a completely different discussion. Don't want to get into that. However, you, you do need to separate. You need to find a charging solution for lithium ion once you get into your motorhome environment. These uh, particular cells, they're grade A, uh, meaning they're in the classification of five to 6,000 cycles. Now, when you buy a, a, a $200, $300 lithium amp, uh, 100 amp hour battery off of eBay, maybe they're good for... 500 cycles. Well, guess what? That still beats a lead acid battery. Those Trojans that I had were probably good from the get-go, maybe 350, 400 cycles. That's it. And they were dying on the vines. So bottom line is you, you want to try lithium? Go buy a cheap battery. Because even, even if you get, say, 500 cycles out of it, that's pretty good. That's going to be a long time, depending upon your, uh, your usage. I don't think you can go wrong purchasing a cheap battery, as long as you're prepared to deal with the failures that are most likely going to occur. And the other bad thing about that is it's sealed. There's not much you can do. Another reason why, number one, I didn't want to spend the money to go Battleborn. Two, I wanted a solution that had individual components that could be replaced at any time. Lithium, uh, the battery uh, are made of these four 
cells, each of them 3.6 volts. They are um, they they are wrapped in a uh, in, in a aluminum housing, and then around that is a very thin piece of plastic. Since these are going to go into a rolling earthquake, I wanted to make sure that I had some insulation material between the different batteries to isolate them because that, that constant little wearing is going to wear through that material. And in this environment, you're going to short positive to positive and yeah, it's all over. So let's talk about a little bit about building these batteries. Uh, these particular cells, they're called prismatic. I guess that's just the, the shape. Um, these cells coming from Eve, the manufacturer gives a uh, specification on the batteries when they are bulked together need to be under pressure. They need to be compressed. But they, they talk about square inch newtons. Hmm. I don't think I'm into that. Basically what I did is I built an enclosure. The batteries came at about 3.2 volts. They are, what, maybe 20, 30% charged. Put them in this configuration, use some, um, some um, uh, threaded rod, and compress the batteries to the point where I could physically move them. In other words, if I tried with great difficulty, I could, I could get them to move between themselves. Because what happens is the minute you charge these things, they swell. And that's the whole intent on the compression stuff. You need to keep these batteries from swelling. So once the batteries were charged, they became extremely tight within this enclosure. And uh, that swelling process, evidently, there's a lot of uh, uh, discussion out there as far as does it really hurt the batteries. I don't think I want to get a battery, a cell from a, a manufacturer that's all swollen up. What does that tell you? The thing's been charged. You don't know how many times. And incidentally, these are available on what Alibaba, you know, all over <laughs> from China. You can you can get these uh, these cells very inexpensive. This cell, brand new, grade A, six thousand cycles, one hundred and thirty nine dollars each. Little bit of a of an issue when you put your own batteries together. These come at about a 20% charge level, you want to balance them. So what you do is you put all these batteries in parallel, charge them to 3.6 volts, and using a 10 amp power supply, that'll take you days, which it did. But what it did is you know, perfectly balanced each cell. Uh, this particular pack is balanced within three millivolts. Each cell is, uh, across the grid is within three millivolts of each other. Now you've got a nice battery system. You need to have a, a way to protect it um, from overcharging and over discharging. This device up here is called a battery management system, a BMS. And this is like a, he, he's a, he's the god, he's the king. What he does is he sits on the negative side of the battery. So he generates a very, very low uh, um, amount of drop, if you will, between the negative battery and the actual negative that goes to your system. Uh, we're talking about millivolts worth of voltage you drop across here. The main function of this guy is to balance, keep these batteries in balance, which is perfectly settable. Uh, you'll find that any BMS that you buy has all these parameters that you can set very easy. This particular battery has a, a BMS that also has a Bluetooth module that's sitting here right here. And if you'd like, I, I do have a, um, a, uh, a tablet out there that, that shows the BMS. You can actually look through all the parameters and see what's going on actively within the battery. So this is not an instant gratification. You're not going to buy these cells and boom, the next day, put them into, into service. You're going to have a little bit of homework to do. Uh, you're going to balance the cells. Uh, take a while, uh, get the structure right. The, um, 
again, when these did swell very nicely, they they tightened right up. And uh, this I, this just happened to to kind of hit my brain as far as a um, an end result, and it worked out really really well. The um, uh huh question about the BMS. Can you give us some of the details on that? What did you pay for it? What model is it? Absolutely. I'm, I'm playing your straight guy. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you uh, for the question because actually I did look around uh, for a BMS. I mean that's that's a very important uh, aspect of, of the of the system. This is made by uh, Overkill Solar, and uh, the reviews out there are just outstanding. Uh, the ratings on this one are 120 amps charge and 120 amps discharge. Um, even the Battleborns, I was surprised at the price point they have. You can discharge them. I'm not sure what the current limit is on discharge. I thought it was 100 amps. It's 100 amps, but we'll do 200 amps in emergency. Okay, so so Battleborn 100 and then 200 amps on a uh, on an emergency draw. However, the charge was only 50 amps on on Battleborn. I was surprised to see that. They recommend 50% of the amp hour. 50%. Okay, so so 0.5C is what they wanted to charge at. Okay. Yeah, this will allow 120 each way. The other thing that's really nice about, um, you know, lithium, you probably don't want to try to discharge more than, say, down to 20%. Now, you can go charge it all the way. You can discharge it all the way. You could do that uh, many, many times. Will you live long enough to see the effects of that? I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at a solution here that's probably going to last 10, 15 years. Um, the, the, my motorhome's going to go to somebody else, I'm sure, within that time frame. The, um, again, all of the parameters are settable. And uh, you'll find that the, they are set up very generic. So you need to understand the battery that you're working with and how to, to, uh, to set everything up. So it's not a... Um, it's not a real out of the box function. You're, you're going to have to do some uh, some homework. The other thing is you're working with extremely high currents, low voltage. You're not going to get shocked off this stuff. But um, just like what happened to me during the build cycle, I happened to drag a piece of wire and uh, it went to the wrong location and vaporized. I mean, it just disappeared. So these things are uh, very, very monstrous when it comes to current. That's on the discharge. On charge, they, um, they, they will take whatever you throw at them. For instance, uh, this BMS is rated at 120 amps charge. You throw 120 amps at it, it'll just swallow it. So there's just no resistance there. It just swallows it. In, yeah, any questions? I'm sorry. What software are you? Oh, very good. Yeah, it actually is uh, their uh, application. Uh, solar uh, Overkill Solar provides the application online. So, yeah, it's very good. I, I it's user friendly. Uh, very, very easy to, to make the configuration changes. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Uh, so, is that on local network only, or is it uh, put out to a server? The information? No, it's Bluetooth. It's just strictly a Bluetooth environment. Actually, the little, the little modules right here. The, uh, the BMS has an internal temperature sensor that monitors its, its temperature rating. And then right here, not connected yet, is a small probe and that attaches down onto the battery cells themselves and then monitors um, uh, that temperature. Uh, those temperature ratings are perfectly configurable as well. So, I mean, you can, you can shut this off at 70 degrees Fahrenheit if you wanted to. Um, very, very uh, uh, configurable as far as the environment you're going to put them into. So we're looking at, uh, with the help of modern technology, we're looking at the uh, specs on your uh, BMS. And it looks to me like it's 150 bucks, which seems like a real steal. Okay, so all in... What is your investment in that setup right there? All in, let's see. I, I want so it's one thirty nine for each individual cell, and then uh, the the one I think I think I got it for like one thirty nine from Overkill Solar. I think it was one thirty nine. 
So somebody can do the math with a calculator, but we're we're probably looking at uh, what six fifty. Yes, well, with tax, seven hundred bucks. Yeah, and that's uh, the total capacity on that was two hundred and eighty. Nice. Yeah, so I I did build two of these packs. Are going to go in parallels, which will give me five sixty. Um, breakers and uh, fuses. Oh my goodness! You definitely when you start playing with this stuff. Actually, any any low voltage DC stuff, you want to make sure that you're properly fused. Go ahead. Does it weigh? Uh, does it weigh a le- enough? No. Well, let, me, let me rephrase that. Can an old guy pick that up? <laughs> well, I just I brought it up here. How much does it weigh? Well, I don't. I I want to say maybe fifty pounds, but I, I've had other people say around sixty. So, well, let's put it this way. Here's the benefit. Uh, so two. Let, let's say they weigh 60 pounds. That's 120. That's, that's 120 pounds. I got rid of almost 500 pounds of lead-acid batteries. That means I can carry more water. I can carry more gas. <laughs> Maybe better gas mileage. So, yeah, it's a, it's a win-win. So, Don, you didn't talk about this, but I'm sure you're aware of it. The BMS is if For the two BMSs, they have to be compatible with each other, and they have to communicate with each other, which you're using the same brand, so they do. But I was just going to point that out, that you don't really want to mix different brands, different BMSs with different batteries. You should stay to the same BMS across the batteries, so they do communicate with themselves, and they are coordinated. So just, you know, I'm sure when you selected that BMS, you took that into account, right? Now, so you say they communicate with each other? I'm not aware of, of, of that. They should communicate with themselves, and they should coordinate with themselves. So, Doug, you want to comment on that? I'm not sure I understand that. Do I want to? <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, I, I think that there are BMSs that do communicate with one another, and they do coordinate, and they'll do it through Bluetooth or whatever. I, I don't know exactly what those are, but as long as that BMS uh, manages the balance of those particular uh, devices, those cells, and you've got another one that's running in parallel, those are going to equilibrate to one another. Those batteries are going to be more or less just like a couple of lead acid batteries. So they don't have to be digitally in touch with one another, but they have to be electrically in touch with one another. Absolutely. I agree with that. Makes sense. Yeah, the, uh, this particular BMS, uh, they call it, it's a 4S. So you have four cells that are in series. And basically, I, I've seen a lot of videos. God, don't watch YouTube and put a battery together, okay? Don't, please don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll find that people grab these cells, throw them together, put in a BMS and charge it and throw it in. Well, they expect the uh, the battery management system, the BMS, to go through a balancing routine to bring all these cells into balance with each other. That's not going to happen for weeks, weeks and weeks. That's why you want to peak these batteries in a parallel environment to 3.6 volts, then connect up the BMS to let it do its job. And this particular pack, I may have mentioned, is within 3 millivolts. So each of these batteries are balanced within 3 millivolts. And that is the job of the BMS to do that. Any other questions? Yes. So how many amp hours are you are you giving up or are you getting more by taking, what, you said six uh Golf cart batteries down to two 12 volts. Are you getting more amp hours or less? Yeah, the six golf cart batteries as new were rated at 220 amp hours, which means I had a 12 volt environment at 600 amp hours, of which you can use 300, right, from lead acid. So this, for the same price, I've got 560. What's your charging solution? I'm sorry. What's, what's your charging solution? Oh, that's a good one. All right, here we go. So the way the way most motorhomes, well, mine is set up, is you have you have uh, batteries, chassis batteries, which start the the main diesel engine, and then you have house batteries, which is everything else, and usually the onboard generator is started. 
by the house batteries. Well, if you plug this directly in, that means you're going to start the generator directly from lithium. That doesn't, that doesn't work real well. I know that's a big controversial thing. I won't go into it. So what I did is I completely separated lithium from lead acid. I maintained a lead acid battery for my starting battery uh, for the onboard generator. And what happens is uh, after you drive a little bit, there's a big old contactor that closes, which commons the chassis batteries to this le small lead acid battery, keeps those batteries charged. What I did is I sensed the voltage coming up on the lead acid, uh, built a little controller. So when the voltage comes up on the lead acid battery on the, uh, the starter, on the generator start side, then I turn on a 40 amp DC to DC power supply and use the lead acids to charge the lithium at 40 amps. This is while you're driving down the road. Otherwise, um, the onboard inverter and, ch and charger technology, it just happens that uh, the one in my motorhome will support lithium. So I, I made sure that that was uh, available as well. So it, it's basically, uh, I charge this from um, the uh, uh, shore power when I'm plugged in and uh, from the alternator when I'm driving. Any other questions? No solar? Oh yeah, I just, oh thanks, yeah. I, I, just, uh, I just picked up, they, actually they were just delivered 10 Renogy uh, 100 watt panels. And um, hey, they, $80, $80 for Renogy 100 watt, their new technology, they are, they're, they're nine bus bars as opposed to five. <laughs> that seems to be a big thing today. So yeah, I've got uh, 10 solar panels that are going to go, eight, I'm sorry, eight that are going to go up on the roof someday. Any other questions? You have a 110 solution. Yeah, the 110 solution is when, when the inverter is running either from, uh, uh, from shore power, then it has a battery charging side that will charge the lithium at, at 100 amps. So with two of these in parallel, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not in any kind of a danger zone. So very, very comfortably, 50 amp, you know, uh, what? 0.45C is what I'll be charging at, so it'll be good. So all in, you maybe have two thousand dollars in an electrical solution for your um, for your toy that runs down the road. That's going to be about right, and I'll tell you where the big dollar signs are that I didn't expect. Wire, holy cow! One ot cable is what I'm using. Six dollars a foot. For good copper welding cable, good copper uh, ends to be, you know, crimped on, those are well over a dollar a piece, probably about a dollar fifty a piece. Yeah, I was absolutely shocked with the amount of money it takes to put this hardware together. But you still have to do the same thing if you were to buy off-the-shelf batteries and stack them in there. You still got that cost. Probably more because you got more batteries. Yeah, you have physically more battery and more, more uh, contacts, more ends. I don't know that I, w I wouldn't hesitate to buy some of these cheaper technologies, this battery. Go, go out and spend the money if you want a 100 amp hour battery. Um, just be prepared for it to, uh, you know, it's kind of like a TV that I bought that was at the store. It was, on, it was on display. It ran for a year. And the price was so ridiculous. And I thought, wow. I'll just use it till it, it quits. Well, that's been five years, right? I mean, you, you just don't know what you're going to get out of this technology. But guaranteed, it's not going to be three, 4,000 cycles. Maybe, maybe 1,000 if you're... But how long is it going to take you to go through those 1,000 cycles? So in, in the time period that you own it, you, you may not even see any degradation. And again, these particular points are said after it meets the 6,000, for instance, cycles here, it's still supposed to be at 80%, which is still pretty reasonable. Anything else? Thank you.